Today's project is the removal of the apron, the skirt here. I'm going to cut out the spot welds. I am going to basically remove the entire thing so that it is always removable. My goal is to be able to uh, pull it to then pull the engine in and out as much as I want. We'll also make repair of this area considerably easier. I don't know if that'll be in this episode or not. Uh, perhaps. I'll try to squeeze that in. We'll see. Um, but basically, a bunch of spot welds over here. A bunch of spot welds over here. A couple bolts. And then I'm going to pull the whole thing out. And uh, that'll allow me to get back into the rest of the engine area and get some cleaning done. And some uh, much needed wiring work. So hopefully this will not be a nightmarish project. So follow along. Thanks, guys. All right, step one is removing the fender. Uh, a lot of bolts. So you can see there's one down there in the uh, rocker thing. Whole bunch going up. And the reason is we need to be able to get access here. What I want to do is drill holes into the apron, not the body, to get the spot welds gone. So I'm going to be going at it from this side pretty substantially, uh, and hopefully that this obviously is going to give me better access. Uh, T-bars also gone, um, or your bumper if you have one, and you will have to remove the uh, tail light. What I did was I just pulled the wires from the tail light, and uh, pull the whole housing off and it worked out pretty well. So I'm going to clean this up, reveal some uh, spot weld little dents, a couple of telltale signs, and then uh, just start drilling all the way up. See how it goes. I'll probably have to use the air chisel in here. Hopefully that won't uh, cause too much damage. Well, yet another discovery. Cleaned everything up, and if you can see here, see how that looks a little uh, bronzy? That, 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 and that were the uh, attachment points. I cut those free, and now that's not attached anymore. So, apparently, the old spot welds are gone, and just those little uh, brazing welds are in place. So that was a little easier than expected. So now I'm going to go up in here to see what I can get done and uh, try not to cause too much damage. But uh, I'm not optimistic. We'll see. Well, that took about 12 seconds from that last clip. Air chisel right up in here. Did bend a teeny bit. I can hammer that out. Uh, this part is no longer attached, so <laughs> I'll take it. So uh, now I got to remove uh, that fender over there and see if it's just as easy on that side. This might be the quickest project in the world. Awesome. Done. The plan. So you see here we got some captive nuts. These are what the uh, fender bolts come into down here and here. I'm going to add a couple from on the back side and have the bolts come in from this side to hold the apron on. All that wiring junk, crusty old, just not worth keeping. All this is going away. I'm just going to cut all of that off right there, yank it through. I have in that box there a brand new rear wiring harness. Obviously going to pull this, check that uh, throwout bearing, do a little bit of cleanup. There's one of the holes for the automatic transmission. That is for the uh, one of the, either the vacuum canister or the ATF fluid. 
The other one is right there. I'll be patching both of those because I don't want any extra holes in the engine compartment. That's not going to do the uh, cooling any good. Um, again, captive nuts here. This is the one area where I had some tear out. You see that? Uh, but I think I'll just turn that into a spot for a captive nut. Hole already drilled. The weld will help hold it uh, securely. So I got to do a lot of cleanup in here. If you look back in here, just a lot of crud. But I'm not looking for spotless, just not as greasy. Not sure if I'll paint in here. We'll see. Maybe just a cut of satin black. But uh, now I just got to uh, clean up the skirt, the apron, and uh, get it ready to go back on when I'm ready for it. All right, I have it clamped back in place. What I'm going to do is just look for a couple spots along here where I can put in some bolts and uh, weld in some captive nuts, do the same over here. Uh, I'm thinking two spots, maybe three, uh, possibly two along here, and then one up back in here and back in there. I just got to figure out which side I want the bolt on, which side I want the nut on. Uh, when I get that uh, figured out, I'll bring you guys back and uh, show you what I'm up to. Okay, so this part of the rear quarter is double skinned. Through there, there's another skin on the other side. So, if you come up underneath here, you can get all the way up to about there. So I'm thinking nut on this side, bolt on that side, bolt there, bolt there, bolt there, hold it nice and firm. I may even look at up here. So if you come around, see this metal flange here, I might put a bolt there or a nut there and have it come through to here. I'll see about that. I wanted to see how solid these these other three are along that edge first. If after I do that this is still kind of flopping around then I will uh, you can hear it it's pretty flexy. Um, same side you can see a little bit better over there. That upper flap if that is indeed in my way, then I will uh, take some time to uh, hold it down and uh, get it figured out. All right, those are the three bolts that I added. One, two, three. They are uh, 5 16 not metric, uh, but that's fine by me. They're just uh, left over from the uh, top cover to a Ford T86 transmission, something like that. Anyway, but it is on there nice and firm and I am pleased. I have the same setup on the other side. So now what I need to do is go up underneath, do a little bit of scrub clean, and then uh, I will tack those nuts in place, pull the skirt, apron, valance, whatever, off, and then uh, sort of firm up those welds a little bit, and then we'll be basically done. I do like that I can do this. Um, it's gonna make it a lot easier in a year or two when I wanna pull the engine for a new clutch or to build it up to an 1800 cc motor which are some of the plans I have in the long run but not in the budget right now so uh, you know I think it'll work it also allows me to have this thing structurally rigid when I repair this mess by cutting it out and then welding in a new patch piece so all that'll work pretty good stuff That's the burn.
Obviously those are tack welds, so now I just have to uh, pull the bolts and the uh, skirt and then I'll have better access to finish those up. So this is the piece that I cut out of a 69 bug, like mine, that was in a junkyard. Uh, some of you may have seen that episode way back when, when I went to the pick apart. This is just all booger welded, it looks awful, this is damaged. So. It's bent up, but I can hammer that back in. So I'm going to do an approximate cutout based on some simple geography here. I did not go down to this seam, so I'm going to cut right along it here. And if that one lines up there. So, cut that out, tack weld this up at the top first because this channel for the rubber gasket is what I need to line up the best, so I'm going to do that. Then I will tack here and here. Then as I heat this up, this thing will be able to bend in place, and then I will do a series of small tack welds along there. Again, I want to do this while the skirt is still bolted in place so that this maintains its shape. I don't want it to collapse in when I cut this out and then make this thing not fit, not work, or possibly distort this sheet metal even more than it already is. So uh, let's see how it goes. Not too good looking.
Well, I still have some finish welding to do. Uh, I found a couple pinholes over here. I'm going to use a little bit of body filler to uh, kind of clean it up a little bit, but I'm feeling satisfied. It's not perfect. It never was going to be. I mean, look at the rest of this thing. But in the grand scheme of things, it's more solid. It's better. This is unsecure. Uh, looks a little bit more to the right like it should. It's not rusted out underneath. Uh, I'm going to uh, probably use a teeny bit of body filler, as I said, just to cover up some of these little uh, pits and things. Um, you don't want it to be too structurally uh, thick here um, so that when the lid comes down, boom, it cracks the bondo. But right now, just to show you, it works. So, again, clean up some of the welds on the back side and a little bit of bondo and stuff, and we'll be good to go. I'll show you guys where I'm at with the uh, apron here. Um, there was a little bit of bondo right there. Uh, I'm not going to fill it. I think it's just a minor dent. There's a little bit of notch out there. I've sanded it smooth ish. I put some bondo around the piece that I patched in just to fill in some of those pits and stuff. It is structurally solid. I've booger welded the heck out of it underneath with uh, some uh, quarter inch rod right under here and right under here just to give it some rigidity. Um, it'll work. This thing is in decent shape. That's about the nicest thing I can say about it. The uh, previous owner, this was actually, the more I think about it, from what I've seen, this is actually not original to the bug. One of these wings here was still welded in to the uh, bug um, after I'd pulled this out. So I have two here and a third one in the car that I've now removed. Uh, so, you know, they clearly removed it to do a lot of the engine work, which makes sense. I would have done the same. And uh, now I'm just salvaging this thing as best I can. Again, this is much more solid now than the other one. And uh, in the end, it'll look a little bit better. I did end up uh, messing up the uh, channel here for the rubber gasket it stops about here and picks up again about there so there will be a flap i i just i can't bring myself to care uh you know not a show car sanded back the bondo feeling pretty good about it overall it's filled in some of the pits uh feels pretty smooth there's a bit of a ripple to it but i'm not convinced that even it came out of the factory perfect so that's my excuse and i'm sticking to it Time for some primer. First coat of primer done. I use uh, Rust-Oleum self-etching. I am noticing in here some lumpiness that uh, I think just is harder to see when it's the metal and the pitting and the bondo and all that stuff. So I will come back and try to shape that up a little bit. I'm also going to maybe come in here and clean up that uh, channel should look like this obviously and it's not even close so once everything's the same color errors are revealed some uh, spot right here where the uh, chipped paint from beneath is uh, still too rough edged spot here where the rubber seal is held in place it's been mashed down so I'll have to get in there with a small screwdriver and pry that up but yeah a little bit more work to do all right so i'm all done it's uh it's all right i think i'm probably just going to end up buying another one at some point but uh at least for now it's going to do the job that i want it to do uh which is not rust have a more effective latch and uh, be removable. In some ways it's good to experiment on a damaged piece so that when I do get a, a repopped uh, apron I can uh, install it 
and have it be removable using uh, sort of the knowledge I've learned from this one. Not terribly satisfied with how that came out. Uh, again, I think my ability to weld, uh, when in doubt, I need to be able to hide what it is that I did weld. And uh, this piece was just a, a little bit too far gone before I even started working on it. This part's dented, thinned out. Uh, yeah, just, you know, live and learn. But it's going to work. And honestly, right now, looks better than several other parts on the bug. So I'll take it. All right, guys. Well, I'm done with this, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. If you uh, can, give me a thumbs up, a like, uh, subscribe, and leave a comment.